Hi, it's January 3rd, 2017. I got this message from my friend, World Publishing. Would you be willing to upload a video about the weather radar or any other weather info you can get on the West Antarctic ice shelves? We see 53 degrees and precipitation, which would mean rain. Look at the above freezing temperatures across the I Ross ice shelf. This means that ice is rapidly melting. Can you see if you can get any evidence that it's raining on the Antarctica ice? And this is the link that was sent to me. And you can see the temperatures down here. <coughs> and this surrounding Antarctica is green, which actually looks like 50 degrees. See that? And then it's blue on here, which looks like below freezing. So, let's see what we can find. So, I found this article from National Geographic by Douglas Fox. Scientists are watching in horror as ice collapse. Boo. Um, and here's a picture with some penguins on the Ross Sea in 2011. This is, um quite a long article. Actually, it's not that long. It's not as long as most books or anything like that. But um, it's very interestingly written. And I'm going to just go down real fast. Here's a map of um, Antarctica. And this is what my friend was talking about, the Ross Ice Shelf right here. So we're just going to go by, 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 by down farther. There's um, a really cool video right here talking about the um, melting of the ice. And then, I keep going, it says um, stunning photos, but I can't get them to show up on my computer for some reason. Let's see. So then, we keep going down, we keep going down. Um, this part of it, melting Antarctica, means coastal flooding for Florida, but of course it wouldn't just be Florida. The drawing of the map of Antarctica. What struck me during my first visit to Antarctica in late 2007 was just how sensitive its ice seemed to be. Even deep in the interior of West Antarctic ice sheet, where we camped that year, 600 miles, 1,000 kilometers from the ocean, just 400 miles or 640 kilometers from the South Pole, my single person tent became uncomfortably warm in the mornings as its red canvas absorbed sunlight. The thermometer hanging my, over my head often read 70 or 80, once even 98 um, Fahrenheit. Over the course of five weeks, my tent melted the snow beneath it and sank a foot. Okay, so then there's more and more on here but I wanted to go down past this to the comments because I would also recommend reading the comments because there's some very intelligent interesting people that commented on this um, and they're sort of making fun of the way the title says scientists watching in horror so anyway um, if you want to look at that, the link will be below. So this is part of an article by Roz Pidco Pidcock um, from 2013. To understand how most of the ice is lost from Antarctica, a new study just published in the Journal of Science looks at the ice shelves that surround 75% of the continent. Ice shelves are floating extensions of land ice that act as buttresses, stopping the ice flowing from the interior straight out into the ocean. <clears throat> and these are all these colored areas. Ice shelves line 75% of the Antarctic coastline. The biggest ones are Ross and Ron Filchner ice shelves, marked here in red and dark blue. And the source is the National Snow and Ice Data Center. So it's this one and this one. Traditionally, science thought large chunks of solid ice breaking off the ice shelves was the main source of ice loss from Antarctica, the process known as iceberg calving. But there is another way. As the ocean below the ice shelves warms, the ice melts from the bottom up, 
something scientists call basal melting. With melting from the top and bottom, some ice shelves are getting noticeably thinner, says the new science or study. So this is a short article about the Andrill Ross Ice Shelf Observatory from 2011. Here are people that contributed to it. Here's a basic picture of it. Okay, so if you look at this picture, it's deceiving because that isn't Antarctica. This is where it is. <laughs> All right, so let's go down, down, down. Now, this is a drawn picture of this um, ice shelf mooring deployed December 1st, 2010. So, going down all the way through. Let's see what's in there. Okay. Um, and then down at the bottom of here, they have these links where you can um, watch what they discovered. And there's also five other videos by the Nebraska PBS team. And this is who found, funded it, the National Science Foundation. The website is by Richard Limeburner. And you can see a video right here by clicking on it. So here's a map of Antarctica. <clears throat> Here is the Ross Ice Shelf. This is Scott Base NZ. Hmm, didn't that look like the same picture we just looked at with an NZ on it? See this? Now this article is saying that Matapori Bay is in New Zealand. Let's look at that other picture. Okay, so we'll look a little closer and what this NZ means here is that that's a New Zealand base. And this right here is a US base. And there's Australia based, France based, Russia based, Australia, Russia, but anyway, this is the area we're looking at here, the Ross Ice Shelf, and I found this. This, see this little town right here? McMurdo, sorry, I'm tired. So according to El Dorado, the weather in McMurdo right now, January 3rd, is um, 37 degrees Fahrenheit. Three degrees Celsius. Looks like no rain for today. Chance of snow and then Wednesday snow showers. I don't see any rain but here are the temperatures. So it doesn't say anything about any rain there right now. Well, that's a pretty good forecast, 10 day forecast. Okay, let's see what else we see. Now, here on El Dorado, we have all these cities in Antarctica that we can look at the weather. Let's look at a couple more. What do you say? Okay, so I'm not going to see in as many cities as on that list, but here's one Vostok, Russian. So we'll go over here and click on it. Ooh, that's cold there. But if you look at the map, um, this is like up higher than it is right here. So I tried looking up to Scott Base. I also don't see that. Let's see what other cities they have there. Just to let you know, I'm also finding these when I click on a city that it doesn't have anything. So I don't know what's up with that. Let's 
let's go back and I'll show you what I mean. So let me go back. So that's cold there. And that is Edmondson Scott Antarctica. Which is actually right here. It looks like in the center of this thing, but the geomagnetic geomagnetic south pole is right here. So here at base Arturo Pratt. <clears throat> we can see the forecast, and if we go down, and down, we can see here on Tuesday, the expected forecast is cloudy with rain and snow in the morning. Rain and snow will become intermittent in the afternoon. Tuesday night, cloudy with rain and snow. So it's raining in Antarctica on January 3rd. Well, actually, that's a few days away. Interesting, don't you think? Now, this lets you know where the base is at for Antarctica of Arturo Pratt, which, by the way, was named after a Chilean man. Okay, so then I found Weather Underground, Weather for Antarctica, and this is much faster way to observe what the weather is like right now in Antarctica. And if you look at some of these temperatures, 37, 36, 34, 34, those are above freezing, 38, 40, 36, that's pretty warm. Oh, look at the name of that city. Here's a picture of Matri Island. There's the name of it right there. Base. And if you want to travel there, there's some information for you. And here is the forecast for Progress Antarctica. Feels like 41. It's warmer than where I live in Wisconsin, United States right now. And, oddly enough, it's going to be warmer all week than where I live right now. <laughs> I love it. And the sun does not set there right now. Intriguing. This is in progress. And right here is progress. Russian base. And here's a link for um, satellite imagery of Antarctica, and it looks like more than just Antarctica by this flashing thing up here. Um, I have no idea what it costs. I'm not going to look into it. I'm busy and tired. But it looks like you could see this much closer. You can click on here. But you, there's still things that are missing that we wouldn't, we can't see close up. And here are some of their satellites. Mm hmm. This is just one of the things they can do with the satellites: mineral mapping. Hmm. Very invasive. That's the same image enlarged. Very, very invasive. Okay, and this site is interesting because you can get closer. But you can't get that close. And actually see something that's helpful. But it's interesting. Also, if you look at this map, it's kind of weird. Queen Maud Land, Queen Mary Land. You know, there's these areas, and I'm almost out of time. So I'm going to click on this. Yes, it does rain in Antarctica, and this is my friend, 